How's it going everyone? And welcome back to Continues to Tick. I hope you're all doing well, as we approach now the midway point of September, which means we have passed another year since 9-11. This year actually now makes it 20 years since the horrific day, which almost went right underneath my nose as the 20th year anniversary, as I was 6 years old when it happened, and now I'm a grown adult at 26 years old. So yeah, time did pass. I almost didn't even realize, and although I was only 6 when it happened, it does feel like an event that just hits too close and feels so raw still. And a lot of this came with age. As when you're little, you just quite don't understand, especially as a child, watching it first ever on TV in the first grade. But time has passed, and to imagine it's already been 20 years is hard to fathom. So much pain on that day, and every anniversary year since. The main reason I bring this up is, as I record this, it is Saturday, 9-11-2021, and one of the most saddening pictures, deepest pictures I have ever seen, was and remains the falling man. If you're familiar with it, I'm sure you'd know what I mean. And well, if you haven't, it's an intense picture to see, one that still overpowers me with emotion, gives me goosebumps every time I think about it, or see it, but honestly, allows me no matter how I feel, to feel a great sense of humility and gratitude for still being able to take my next breath and live in my thoughts today and record this video, for example. So out of respect, the next five seconds will be in silence for 9-11 and all those lost. Then we'll move forward with the video. So last week I showed my face, which I don't do often enough. I mean, I am human after all which I'm sure we all know, but a voice on a screen is just that, a voice on a screen. From time to time though, I do try to, I like to try to make myself more personable. After all, this is going to be a long journey. And although already awesome to see, it's nice to point out we are over a year into this YouTube channel, which remains something I continue to look forward to doing every single week. And I don't believe I've skipped the week's video in that time frame, which is also pretty cool. But if you happen to watch my video from last week, I was on my five year anniversary weekend getaway at a rather nice Airbnb to celebrate being in the moment with my girlfriend, who I often mention as my partner now, primarily because after a while, it just sounds a bit confusing, no? To be together for four to five years without marriage or kids and still call someone that close to you, a girlfriend or boyfriend, it starts to become more than that. And I can't call her my wife without the title, so partner must do. But who knows, maybe it's just me and my partner who feel this way. But with today's rather long intro out the way, this week's video as the title shares, I'm going to dive into the biggest single reason as to why I invest into only dividend paying stocks. And I was contemplating to add in the visuals with the storyline or find a way to best incorporate them into this week's video. But in addition to telling, I have to show you, show why or what it is that keeps me investing into dividends. And what better way I think than to go over my portfolio's performance this last week. A Red Sea Festival it was. But with a huge caveat, as I got paid the most dividends I've ever received in this portfolio in a single week. So rather than jumping into visuals with the storyline, let's jump into the portfolio review where I can explain instead. But first, how about you make sure to consider liking the video and subscribing if you haven't yet already. Time continues to pass. It's what my channel name infers, and slowly but surely, I want this channel to become a lifelong storyline we may all in some way relate to. Sure, we started with finances and the dividend portfolio, and that's a key pillar, and it'll remain one in my lifetime. But life is much more than that, and as time continues to pass, so does our opportunity for growth in other aspects of our lives, such as in relationships, our decisions to have kids, get married, not have kids, not get married, Maybe even decisions with employment, 
and careers. As time passes, I'm learning this game of life, as are you. And I hope along with time to continue to document mine and share my experiences with you. But even if this wasn't enough of a reason, how about for this picture of a Fiat car with an interesting license plate? <laughs> I'd have to say, that's a pretty good one. So here we are this week in the Jesse's cash flow portfolio. Currently sitting at, oh yes, <laughs> quite a bit less than we were at the mark of last week's video. Sitting further away from the $36,000 mark. Now at $35,626.09. And this is on the all-time charts, by the way. And we'll jump into the last week's performance here in a second. But this is with the return of 33.26%, which equates to a total portfolio gain of $4,976.62. And of this, for market gain alone, is $4,407. And from earned dividends, it keeps climbing. We're now at $569.40. So now going on to last week's performance here. So clearly this last week wasn't the best, unless you happen to be heavy in AMC stock here, for example. Investing with the Wall Street bets. That's a pretty good chart for this last week. And I'm just kidding, no hate towards the Wall Street bets. They've done some pretty interesting stuff so far. But as you see with my performance here, I'd imagine you may have gone through the same. You might be sitting with the red last week performance as well. So here's mine. Minus $895.46 for this last week of the portfolio. Ouch. That's a pretty good amount. And that's bleeding there, that's a hemorrhage. And this equated to a minus 2.45% of the portfolio. And given the portfolio size of, you know, $35,000, $36,000, doesn't seem like a lot, but it's nearly $1,000. Nearly $1,000 lost. And if we look down below here, we can see <laughs> that Red Sea Festival. Oops, everything but my McDonald's. That's interesting. Maybe people are excited about the McPlant with that Beyond Meat. Who knows? <laughs> but how about let's just go down the line here. We got real estate at minus nearly 5%. Consumer staples, a 1%. Index fund, almost 2%. Tech, about 2% in the red. ETF, about the same. Industrials, minus 3%. Energy, minus 1.3%. And materials. Oh man, that cardboard and paper. But my point by going over this last week's performance is that it was red and it was bleeding. And there's no way to make this look pretty. And I lost nearly $900 just this last week from what's considered to be a pretty safe dividend portfolio. Pretty conservative one. And at the end of the day, when I go back to my all-time charts, we've had some growth, so it is a dividend growth portfolio. So seeing, you know, last week's performance, you know, there is some pain there. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, and it does hurt. But now let's jump into the activity section for this last week. And now here we are in the activity section for this last week. And this is an example as to what is the single biggest reason for my investing strategy of only investing into dividend paying stocks. As you've noticed with time, my portfolio has had some growth, some capital appreciation. But what I look for that set me apart to divert from a strictly growth strategy play to a strictly dividend investing play is this, or are these, these dividend payouts. As you saw, I had a rather horrible week in terms of portfolio performance, in terms of growth, capital appreciation. But no matter that performance, my dividends remain safe. And here we are getting paid, the most in payouts I've had in a single week since I've started this portfolio, back on July 20th of 2020. And this is why I invest the way I do. With time, my portfolio will grow, just as any well-planned portfolio will, but so will the dividends. And the dividend payouts fortunately aren't determined on a weekly basis of a company's performance. Meaning one bad week, or bad timing of market withdrawals, it won't kill me financially, or my dividend payouts. Such like the 4% rule and a strictly growth play. The concept that the companies I invest in will pay me regardless if it underwent a bad week or downturned market is why I invest for this strategy. I could even further say the concept that a company I invest into will pay me as an investor at all is also why I chose this strategy. But the gist remains the same. So to further solidify my example here, here we are starting on September 7th, getting paid by Johnson & Johnson $4.68. Here we also are getting paid from Pfizer, $6.82. Also on September 7th, getting paid by a Southern company, $4.11. These are pretty big dividend payouts. Here we are also getting paid by ADM, $4.45. And here we are on September 8th with our $500 deposit. It's our systematic game plan. 
And here we are with a 30, almost $31 snowball. And that's a big one. Here we are on September 10th getting paid by ExxonMobil, $5. And then IBM, $2.79. And then Sherwin-Williams of $0.62. Cents. Next up is Snap-on, $2.27. Sunoco Products, $2.33. Also on September 10th, we're getting paid by Chevron Core, $4.53. And last but never least, getting paid by Walgreens, $7.74. This is almost like a return receipt from shopping at Kohl's. <laughs> Can you imagine this? These are companies paying me back for literally just investing into their company. They are paying me. And that is why I invest for dividends. Because it doesn't matter what happened over this last week. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, this is what I'm after. Getting paid $45 worth of dividends. $45 I got this last week from dividends. That's the most I've ever gotten. We've been systematic. We've seen the progress and it's unfolding. And just had the cherry on top. We currently sit with the cash balance of $30 that's upcoming for next week. So as you saw, we had a $30 snowball and we're expecting the same next week. And here we are on the all-time charts, 33% return, $4,400 just from market gain. That looks like it's a little bit of growth. I'm not trying to hammer in the nail, but I just wanna bring up the point that in today's time, it's still okay to invest just for dividends. It's a strategy, just as is growth. For me, I decided to do my homework up front and I realized just for my personality, my frame of mind, the way I want to live in the future, investing for dividends and strictly for dividends is the route that I took. And this is one of the biggest reasons right here as to why I decided to do so. And just as my channel name infers, time it continues to tick and so will this dividend portfolio. And I'm excited to see the progress continue to unfold and continue to share it with you guys along the way. There's a lot that I've learned. There's a lot that I'm learning and I'm excited. Whether it's good or bad, there's always opportunity for growth and a lot of avenues in our life. <laughs> but enough of that ramble. We've made it through seven days. And because of that, we have a high chance of making it through another seven days. So as always, I'll see you next week with another week's video. And I'm looking forward to it. And as always, take care. See you then.